whether you're Married or single or poly or ace Or hanging out with swingers back at your place Listen to us as we get no fuck On Tinder and Bumble and plenty of yucks Trying and trying and having no luck Because we all know Dating kinda sucks Sarah and Adam are two of a kind He says stupid shit and she doesn't mind They're not doing this show to make any bucks Life as a chicken whose feathers they pluck Why does it work? Well here is the crux They both know Dating kinda sucks Dating kinda sucks Hi, I'm Adam Ethevitable And I'm Sarah This is Dating Kinda Sucks, a podcast about dating, sex, and relationships This week we'll be asking the question can jealousy be healthy? Enjoy the show. And hey, YouTube, thanks so much for watching on our channel. All 15, I'm going to say 15 now, all 15 of you. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and like this video because we're going to keep making great content, apparently. <laughs> apparently, apparently. It's still, still going to be happening. <laughs> Do you know well, what day it is, Adam? It is. <laughs> it's a weekday. I know it's a it weekday. It is a weekday. Um, I don't, I think it's. Monday? It's Tuesday, Today's June 7th. Tuesday. Okay, yes. Today is Tuesday. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, that's right. Okay, because I had to check out I'm uh check out of my Airbnb in Dallas and I am now in Tulsa Ooh. for a couple nights. Yes. And uh going to uh see a friend here for a couple nights and hang out. And so um that's uh that is Tuesday. Yes, I'm only here till Thursday. I have to remember this because sometimes I get worried that I'm gonna forget to check out. That I'm just because like they'll I'm, kick you out though, you know. Well, but like an Airbnb or something where like I'm just gonna like all of a sudden, you know, there's gonna be like a knock at the door and they be like, uh, you were supposed to be out of here like two hours ago, and I'm gonna feel really bad because I have to clean the place and all that stuff. So or you're just like naked on the bed. Well, the... that's what I would be. I would be naked and like <laughs> there's gonna be nudity involved no matter what. So that yeah, I always kind of okay. worry about that. So I, I'm uh yeah, I'm in I'm in Tulsa and you are you are in Guatemala. Um, this is actually our first episode with you in Guatemala because I did my solo episode last week. I know. Yeah, I was vacationing in Guatemala and now I'm still kind of vacationing in Guatemala because <laughs> we're doing this in the middle of the day. And yeah, so right now my home base is in Antigua and then I'm just going to be kind of bopping around the country for the next three weeks and then heading to Mexico after that and then back to Nashville. That's that's exciting. That is a uh... Is my microphone on? Okay, good. That is, uh, that, that's, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, it is exciting. It's just, it's an adjustment from when I was in Colombia and I was with a group of people. Now it's just me out here completely solo. And, you know, I think the first week of being on the road and actually like traveling and all the vacation aspect was fun. But now I think the reality is kind of set in of, oh, you've got four more weeks of this, babe, you know, just, uh, right expectations you know meet some people do some things yeah meet some people make some friends um you know when uh, my friend lisa travels internationally like she'll be like oh i met this cool person at a bar and they told me about all the other cool places to go and so i'm gonna meet them out tomorrow night and i was like that's great like she she makes friends so quickly and where was i mean it takes me a little bit of time too but um i think it's a good I'm idea just, i'm just very in my own bubble like i'm paying right. attention to some to my surroundings but i'm just in my own bubble of i don't want to impose on anybody else's good time and I don't want, I'm not the type of person who's going to go up to somebody and go oh hey da, 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 unless it's like a party and it's a close intimate setting but I haven't really been to any of any events that have warranted me needing to go up to somebody yet so yeah mm -hmm. well, that's good um speaking of uh, being your own bubble and being safe, I was gonna say oh, I oh. was I was literally gonna say and I just transitioned into the next <laughs> thing because my mother is watching all of my TikToks right. and I, I was doing the TikToks just for fun and traveling and whatever. And I had posted this TikTok a couple of days ago. Um, there was this really cool food market and I decided to just walk over there. Everything's pretty cheap at the market too. So I was going to grab some food and I was kind of, the market's shaped in like a U. So I was walking from the top through the, you know, the U, the, this, what you, the arch part of the U right, and right. then up to the other side and at the bottom there was a group of guys and they just all kind of gave me a look and you know I'm obviously paying attention I'm not in my own little but you know I'm in my own bubble but I'm paying attention to my surroundings and kind of gave them right. a look back and then just kept walking and looking at the food and whatever and then I walked back the other way and passed them again and one of the guys kind of looked at me and then said you're alone aren't you 
Ooh, and that's yeah, yeah. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I am leaving, and it's been fun, but I'm going back to my apartment that I'm staying at. So you know, that was my gut reaction, and I immediately left and. I, I just think it was important to share on social media. It was like, I had the initial gut reaction before anything was said. And then I just got out of there. You know, I wasn't going to stick around. And some yeah. people on TikTok were saying, oh, well, what if he was just trying to flirt with you and he realized you were alone? I'm like, yeah, like I'm going to fucking take that risk and be like, oh, maybe he's just trying to be nice. Right. It's so important to listen to your gut. And I think that that's, uh, I mean, that, that's the best option because just to be safe, you want to be safe while you're traveling. And and also, it's if you were single, would it still be a risk? Still, it still would wouldn't still, be. It still wouldn't be worth the risk, you know. Yeah, I would still be uneasy about it, and and the fact that it's in the middle of like it wasn't the middle of the night, but it was you know eight o'clock at night, and I don't know, just it being dark, there being yeah. a large crowd of people, and then that being said, and I'm like, yeah, no, fuck this shit. No, no dick is worth being uh, potentially sold into white girl slavery. You know, it's just. Yeah. Well, and it's it's not like he approached me at a bar, you know, right, and we made right. eye contact or whatever. It was, I was just mind, my, minding my own business. I had passed him a couple of times, but you don't need to call out the fact that I'm alone. And then his friends heard that too. And I'm like, yeah, a, a group of three or four guys all noticing that I'm alone. Hmm. Yeah. Not feeling safe. So of course my mom saw that and freaked the fuck out and was like, yeah, she did. <laughs> you need to be safe while you're there. You shouldn't have ever got alone. And I was telling her the same shit happens in the United States. Right. It's happened when I was with friends in other countries. When I was in Colombia, there were moments where I was like, eh, I need to head out of here. But I just think talking about it and going, trust your gut is always yeah. an important statement to make. So that's why I made it. Yeah. No, and I, I think it's very important and it's good for anyone who travels, especially if you're a woman traveling alone to, to really pay attention to your gut. And I, I think it's good that you, it's a good example. Yeah. Um, and of course it was a man too. You know what I mean? Well, right, like, right. It would be different if it was like, like, I think it would be different if it was just like a couple or if it was, uh, you know, a group of girls that were out or something like that. And they said something, Hey, are you alone? Come join us. Or, you know, something like that would be a little different. Yeah. Than, that was not this vibe at all. Right. Right. Nope. It was, ooh, girl, alone. Hmm, what could happen? And of course, people were like, are you carrying on you? I'm like, bro, this isn't the fucking US. I don't have a, I don't have a fucking gun on me or a knife or anything. I flew here. What the fuck? Wait, what, is, what a stupid question from anybody literally. who asked that question. Just, yeah. You're a fucking moron. What are you carrying? I'm like, Ugh. literally nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm carrying these finger guns, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That, that, that's a lot funnier on YouTube than it is going to be on audio. And it's just, you can't tell that I'm just flicking the bird. But uh, oh, yeah, well. I was going to say the effect people, is not is gone <laughs> just you have to go to youtube to watch that part uh speaking of which if you're listening to this too and you're hearing any background noise or anything just a quick disclaimer because sarah is uh doing this from a basically a uh, like a, a, a phone little, booth a little recording booth uh that's not exactly soundproof in guatemala and i am uh in, in a very very loud air-conditioned room in uh in the like i said in tulsa so if you do hear some background noise that's why because sarah is very you know in retentive speaking of, oh you know actually that's a good question you know i know how much you are you know very retent you know anal retentive and very you know which is good and a perfectionist when it comes to our audio so how was um, my solo episode i didn't listen to it you motherfucker i knew you were gonna say that <laughs> i fucking knew you were gonna say why that. do you fucking dude at what point would i have had time to listen to that episode when you were just dipping your little toes in the pool and just hanging out with and just what drinking internet? and whatever with what internet with oh what internet? it already downloaded and you know it no nah, whatever nah. No, because what typically happens is I think you've done a couple episodes without me since we started the podcast. This is my all, second, only my second. Because the other one we did, you did when I was in South Dakota and yes. you did, you interviewed. Um, um, oh, no, I guess I did do it. Well, that wasn't by myself. I was interviewing someone. But, but like no, it was, right. it was, it was without me. Yes. Yes. The, but I remember listening to that one. Yeah. And I was pissed. Yeah, you and so pissed. I'm just not going to <laughs> listen. You're just not going to listen. <laughs> You don't you you brain dump ap after each episode, anyways. So. Well, I know, I know. But just uh, it's funny. I could have been talking about you the whole time too, and you wouldn't even. I don't know give it a shit. I don't fucking care. I guess recap, we'll recap me. Recap. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I didn't say anything about you. It was it was just. Uh, it was, but anyways, it was it was no, a hard my... episode. It made me appreciate having you uh, like as a co-host so much more too. I will tell you that. You know what my favorite part is? What? Adam goes, you know, I'm going to do an entire episode by myself, but I'm going to make it real short, you know, maybe 30, 45 minutes, something short. I'm going to type up the agenda. 
he types up the agenda and he goes, well, I got a four or five page agenda right now. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, good luck keeping that under 45 minutes. And then he's, he calls me. He's like, you want to guess how long the episode is? What was it? An hour and 40 minutes or something? Uh, hour 20. It was an hour 20. So, okay. uh, you know, just our, our typical episode. It just, it was just me for the whole time, which was a lot harder than, uh, than, than I expect, expected it to be. So uh, no one forced you to do it that long. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's true. That is true. No one forced me. I could have been a lot shorter, but I, I don't think I would have made the points that I wanted to make. And so I'm glad I did it, but yeah. I also don't want to do episodes by myself uh, unless I absolutely have to. It's, it's not much fun. It, it's just because I can't, I can't, to- I can't zone out. I can't think about what I'm going to say next because I actually have to be all the, the one saying everything, you know, like. Uh, yeah, you got to be on your game. Yep. I feel like with like some podcasts where it is just one person, they have a producer or someone that's like in there that's still kind of working off them that's giving them notes okay here's next on the agenda etc but when it's just you and no producer and no anybody it's got to be it, it, it's hard yeah uh, so um let's uh all right let's get back to you and um oh, what's yeah. going on with you and master so guatemala is being safe in guatemala uh, how about you and uh, master and none um i mean things are fine you know you know how it is when we're gone and our communication style gets really weird because he doesn't communicate as well. As in, as in there is none? <laughs> there is more now than in Colombia, surprisingly. But that, I don't, I think he's just, he's wanted to talk to me more about a lot of things and things that are on his mind, which funny enough, the most recent call or some of the most recent calls have been him basically <laughs> reorganizing and redecorating our apartment. And he conveniently chooses to do it when I'm not there and have zero say. Um, so he calls and he's like, yeah, so he, he's like, you know, you know that travel's really important to you. He's like, working out and having my gym equipment in my home is really important to me. So first like, of all, I just love that it sounds like he's like, he wrote out a little pitch. It was like, all right, <laughs> how, how am I going to, how am I going to bring this up to her? Like, uh, like at a first two, I'll be like, all right, Sarah, picture this, you know, like he's got like this little idea, like a little Imagine. PowerPoint presentation for you. Okay. Yeah. And he's like, this is really important to me, which I completely understand, you know, and I can go weeks on end without seeing him and he's cool with it. You know, there's flexibility in our relationship, obviously, and I want him to be happy. So he's going on and explaining there's this fucking, I don't even know the name of the piece of equipment, but it's like this, not a pull up bar, but an attached barbell thing that would be drilled into the wall. And then he would attach barbells to it and just a a kind of and it but it folds into the wall and Adam is shaking his head but it's kind of a clunky not aesthetically pleasing because it's a gym piece of equipment because it belongs in a gym agreed but but our gym sucks his gym doesn't have the equipment and he's already purchased a lot of the stuff that goes with it he would just want to purchase this last piece um so I'm like okay well if you can fit it in your room or you know if you can fit it somewhere that's really not obstructing a lot of other things we already have set up I'm fine with it I don't care so he's like okay cool so he starts looking up different types whatever and then he messages me as a joke he's like I'll let you pick out the color and there's like fucking neon pink and neon orange and all these stupid colors I'm like I'm gonna pick black or white or gray like I'm not picking anything crazy so he he pulls me up on FaceTime and he's showing me the living room and he's already turned the living room into his gym, which I just have to laugh because, and I don't care. Like I'm not fucking there. I'm not tripping over the barbells or anything, but he's like, yeah, I'm trying to figure out where this is going to go. And da, 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 da. And I look at the floor. I'm like, you already made this your gym. You already made the living room your gym. Where do you want to put it? And he's like, well, it can go on this wall or it can go in the living room and we'll just move the couch and we'll put it over here or it can go in your room. I'm like, it's a- oh, 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 it can, can it? <laughs> it, it, it? Technically it can, but I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to do all of that. And so he had already done the measurements on everything. And then he was talking about we could switch rooms and he can, he can take my room. And he's like, well, you'll have a bathroom attached to your bed. He was trying to sell me on switching to his bedroom. And I'm like, I really don't want to fucking do that either. Plus I'm not there. So it's not like any decision is going to be made. I definitely think it's, I definitely think we can come to a compromise and have him be happy and me be okay with the decision. Yeah, the compromise <laughs> is to use the barbells at his gym. Like, how can they really be that much different than what you need at your place? I don't understand. They're fucking barbells. I don't, I don't know, but you know, I have my things, he has his things, and we work toward a compromise. So 
I, I did say if he could find a good spot, AKA behind the door in my bedroom, if possible, he could put it in, you know, if he put it in a space that didn't already fuck up my shit, then I would be okay with it. But then I said, how is that going to work? Because you like working out at midnight. What are you going to do? Come into my right. room at midnight? And he goes, well, I'll compromise on that and just work out at, like when you're not oh in there. God. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be so complicated. <laughs> this is going to be a case of men killed by barbell to head. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone considers it justified homicide. Um, <sighs> I, I feel like in cases like this, when you're in an apartment too, like the compromise is, I won't get one of these until we have a place that's bigger. Yeah. I will just work out at the gym where, I mean, that that's the compromise is I can go to a gym. I'm, well, that, I'm just, I just, in my, my opinion. That's part of the conversation I had is, are we going to stay in Nashville? Are we moving? Like if, if we're locking into another year at this place, sure. Fine. Cause I mean, I think the space is already big. Right. But, you know, I guess if you want your own personal gym, then we would need a three bedroom and a lot of places don't accommodate for that. But yeah, if we're staying there another year, then sure, I'll make the compromise. But if we're only there for another six months or even less, like, why are we going to make all of these changes, you know, just for six months of that and then having to patch up all the fucking holes in the wall and patch up the holes and then having to pack and move all of those things too move all that's of the on heaviest, him that's the on him fucking things in the world <laughs> he wants to work out he can carry that shit oh that ain't me God. that ain't me yeah that just sounds lovely but you know i'm i'm willing to make it work but to a degree i really don't want it going in the living room or i would prefer it going in his bedroom if he could move some things around but it's hard for me to say yes or no to something when i'm not there and i'm not approving it being in my room until i'm home so which is good yeah don't say yes to anything until you're back uh, i think that's definitely a good idea yeah i love him but that, i was just like i called you i was like what the fuck is going on yeah. i leave for a week and not already my house is all all over the place yeah no that, yeah that would that would definitely uh, that that would that would bother me more than it seems to be bothering you. I will tell you that. Um, it does sound like it bothers you a lot more. Oh, so much. Just the idea of like my like my home and someone deciding, hey, I'm going to rearrange some things, and uh, like everything like in the way that I've already had it, and it seems great. Like it just that yeah, that for some that really bought, gives me like anxiety thinking about it. I just want it to look nice. So <laughs> here's the thing: if we do switch, it's rooms, not going to look what- nice ever. <laughs> They're well, fucking here, here, barbells. They can't look nice. <laughs> Here's the thing. If we do switch rooms, he's moving all my shit. I'm not, I'm not moving. He's moving all my shit. And then he can have his room with the barbells or whatever, however the fuck he wants. But I guess why I don't want to move rooms is because I don't physically want to fucking move my shit. You know, sure, sure. I'm, I'm fine with making accommodate, like making it work, but I don't want to physically move my shit. So if he wants to I'll move little pieces and he can do the bulk stuff, then yeah, sure, that could work. But I, I just don't want to, that's why I'm like, put it in my room. I don't want to go through the effort of changing everything up or, you know, I, I at least want the living room to look nice, but it's really, yeah, it's really not that big of a deal to me. I just find it funny that I leave and then it's like, can nothing remain constant when I'm gone? <laughs> yep. And that's, that's when he gets a hair up his ass to make some changes. Wow. <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's take a quick break, and when we get back, we will talk about what's going on in my life. Plus, we have a uh, another caller to the DKS helpline. So, like you mentioned earlier, I didn't listen to your episode, but did you cover anything during your shenanigans in Texas? I didn't really talk about what I was doing. I said I just wanted to focus on, which is <laughs> that's even funnier now that I think about it. I talked an hour and twenty minutes purely about the topic like i didn't i didn't really do anything except like a shout out to a patreon oh which by the way uh thank you to we have two new patreon uh subscribers <laughs> it reminds me uh michaela flint and holly lynn blair thank you so much for uh, joining our patreon you too Yay. can support us for as little as five dollars a month at patreon.com slash dks podcast we'd love the support but uh other than that and a brief little hey sarah's in guatemala this is it i so uh, it was just me talking about the topic so it was it was probably you know fully the, like uh, if it yeah. would have been me it would have been a two and a half hour episode or it, i would have just cut you the fuck off and been like adam wrap it up <laughs> basically because yeah we would have been talking about ourselves for for the first half and yeah i know this is just all that episode so no uh i like i just said i'm in tulsa right now i was in um the austin area which was i was in san marcos texas which is not actually austin it's uh, about an hour from austin and san antonio and i had all these huge plans to go visit both of those cities and <laughs> plans. go see Adam? all these things oh yeah yeah i guess i guess which which towns i visited none of them 
but also because my travel during that that time ended up in a um during memorial day weekend and so it was so packed and one day i did try to go to the, like the couple of the state parks and uh, like um there's a dam nearby that i wanted to see and they were all closed because of capacity and the traffic was miserable and it was fucking awful and i also rented an airbnb that was a private room in someone's house which mm. i don't know why i did that um but uh, <laughs> it was probably because it was within my budget but then afterwards i was like what the fuck was i thinking like i don't want to sh- be in someone's like house in a private room because they're like you're welcome you're welcome to use the kitchen and the living room they're very nice people and yeah. like uh you know and but here's your room and here's the bathroom and our ours on the other side of the house and you know but yeah you welcome. just felt uncomfortable you know, like i feel like i'm imposing and like and and yeah. the wi-fi was bad in that part of the house so i i was gonna have to sit at their dining room table to do anything luckily mm. for me uh, the first night was very uncomfortable for me like very uncomfortable also i don't like getting, when i get up and i have to pee in the middle of the night i have to like all right now i have to put on clothes to walk out of the room into the bathroom <laughs> you know like just that's not just you right and and like that then i'm awake because like then i i I had to find a shirt find shorts you know i had to like actually like it wakes me up my conscious you know i'm not like you can't just like stumble to the bathroom pee and then go back to bed um so then i'm awake and so it was miserable but then they happen to be going out of town uh for the uh the entire rest of the time that i was there so that was amazing so i had the whole house to myself and i could just walk naked to the bathroom without a problem i hope they don't have security cameras in their house i have no idea um (laughs) lucky them <laughs> <If> they <did. laughs> yeah. um and, and i was able to work at the diner too but anyways it was so it was nice once they left but it was i didn't do much i found a dive bar that was a cool really cool dive bar um that someone recommended i, I got to meet with a tiktoker uh, kalani um who uh, was a fan and then we actually had a great time she was somebody i was like hey if i lived here we would be friends and then we actually went to the movies the next day and that was really cool so that was, that was a good time and then going to dallas Dallas was um was all right um up until I ended up uh, meeting up with um another TikToker uh, Nikki Fox who uh, we become friends and she was really excited and wanted to show me bars so we went out to a couple bars <clears throat> and uh, ended up staying out all night um going to like IHOP at three in the morning and it was it was a like it was a really like fun night it kind of reminded me of being out in Orlando so like it had a, a little bit of that feel and then uh, and then I had uh, I had a friend of mine who's uh, kind of an ex, kind of um, just a friend or whatever, uh, come over to my Airbnb that I had, which was the cutest little Airbnb behind. There was a guest house behind uh, a, a gate in someone's house. Like they had a, a gate for their driveway and mm-hmm. then uh, the, the main house. And then it was a little guest house behind there. And that was really cute. And uh, it was it was nice and comfortable and cold. And, and like, and I could make it very dark, which was perfect, and uh, didn't want to leave. Um, and the owners of the actual main house were gone the entire time I was there. So I never actually had to deal with any human people in my way. And I could have all the privacy I wanted, which was which was fantastic. Um, because at one point after going drinking that first night, the next morning, or not the next morning, at like three in the morning, four in the morning, whatever, I had to I stumble outside, um, bare ass naked, okay. vomit in the bushes. So, okay, no hangover the next day. So, I guess that was good. But then I did a photo shoot with a friend of mine. Oh my um, god! <laughs> and uh, and I'll tell you, I, I think I'm really, really touch starved. And I think I told you this. I'm pretty sure I told you this, but like, yes, we were, you did. Okay, yes. we, we were taking photos, and and like, uh, and she, she was an OnlyFans, and she wanted photos for that, and she was so she was actually like naked on the bed, and I was taking photos, and my phone, I do everything, all of my photography is done with my phone, and it started to get a little overheated, which it happens sometimes. Like I got a little cool off, and she's like, "All right, why don't you just come? Why don't you just come cuddle?" And I was like okay uh, and it was just like so i just like I, I just like went and laid down next to her and we just like just laid in bed and just kind of hugged and it was like i was like ah like it felt like honestly like just weeks of stress just disappearing like i i it was just just a hug can do that yeah just sitting there and like and there was nothing sexual that happened um like i i was just sitting there and she was just like kind of like just like rubbing my chest to like and and everything and i just had like and we just like kind of cuddled up and we just were sitting there and just chatting because we hadn't caught up in, in a few you know in a while and we were just catching up with each other and it was just like having the 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 human on human interaction was i was just like I feel like I feel recharged after this. Like it was really nice. And then it was absolutely completely platonic as platonic as, you know, to like, she was completely. I know naked. because you, you I was, said that I, I was I like, my, you didn't yeah. do anything. There was no, Wait, what? no sexual activity at all. Um, you know, like I'm just sitting there, like I said, yeah, as, 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 as platonic as that can be uh, it was, and it was actually really, really nice and, and quite, quite relaxing. So 
I, uh, so Adam needs more hugs. Is I, apparently, what I'm and I, I just yeah, I just apparently I just I need cuddling. I think is what it is. Not just a hug. A hug is nice, but like I need like you know because that's what I did in, in Knoxville too. Like we took a nap together, and it was just like so oh, nice yeah. just to to lay there and, and not we. I, uh, for people who maybe are new, it wasn't Sarah and I. I'm talking about the person that I'm. No, I'm not in Knoxville. Knoxville. I'm no, not in Knoxville. That ain't me. Clarify, oh, clarify that. <laughs> that that who would we, never happen. Who the we was? No, I no. no. <laughs> I'll give you a hug, dude. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's what, yeah. <laughs> but um yeah no no the person that i that i met up with uh knoxville that we took a nap together and it was just very it was it had a very it was very platonic and um but it was nice and re- and recharging so i think i've just i'm very touch starved right now uh, and so that's um something that i'm gonna have to figure out so question when you go to utah even though you know you're gonna have a lot of the ls not lsd what the fuck is L- it called? lds <laughs> Not LSD. You could have a lot of LSD too. Yes, yes. Um, but there's going to be a lot of people in that faith in the area. Would you consider dating? Oh yeah, there? because people who are ex Mormons are freaky as hell. And absolutely, like people, like the <laughs> oh the ones God. who are ex LDS, like they're like it's essentially it's like when you get divorced and you go through a tramp page or whatever when you break up with somebody and you go through that. Like they're they're like all of these things that I've never experienced in my life. I want to try everything. Like they like so they're they're usually actually pretty pretty fun people. And there's a, there's a huge um, kind of artsy um like giant like um like queer friendly a group in salt lake city too they're all artists and musicians and stuff like that um that i'm I'm friends with a lot of those so there's there's a lot of really cool people in the area so yeah i I will probably try to date around okay Um, so you won't be touch starved there hopefully not yeah hopefully not we'll see um (laughs) but yeah so so it was it's fun uh i'm leaving tulsa in a couple days and i'm going to colorado springs for a week and then i will be finally in utah outside salt lake city for i mean at least at least a month and a half uh maybe longer it really kind of depends on on life we'll see we'll see what happens um, I, wanna, say I, wanna, six months. <laughs> I, I mean i would be okay with six months because i want to finish the book and i really need to sit down and have a routine for that and so that'll be a good time to get a routine and finish writing the book and it'll be nice to have a, i'd like to have some consistency for for a few months at least yeah i get that so that's Is that uh, it that's, Is that that's, that's 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 it for my life right now yeah oh. otherwise it's uh, you know relatively boring um we'll see well, what we're both happen. on the road so both we're doing cool things yeah yes yeah, like staying in my hotel room and never leaving so cool. <laughs> okay well i'm doing cool things <laughs> It's funny. I've been to Tulsa for two nights, and I'm being dragged out both nights because the friend, my friend that I'm meeting here, Anna, she's like, she's like, I've got plans for us. We're going to go to this bar tonight, and then tomorrow we're going to this place. is really cool, and I want to show you this place and this place. And I was like, all right, fine. Well, you don't have an excuse because when it was just you in Texas, it was easy yeah. for you to say no because it was only you holding you accountable. Right. So. Exactly. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, well I was going to say, yeah. What, oh, what, 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 Oh, no, I was going to say, before we go, we do have, an, yes. our hotline is actually popping right now, and we do have someone who left us a voice message. Um, her name is Leah, and let's listen to it. Hi, uh, my name is Leah, and I've been talking to this guy for about four years now, and he keeps coming back to me, but swears I'm not a rebound. And the relationship we have is, so well put together for I don't know what reason or how but my question is should I remove this person from my life I don't think he serves a purpose anymore but I still love him and care about him well thank you for the call Leah um and and I think you kind of answered your own question um Mm -hmm. you know you've been talking to this guy for so long and you and he swears you're not a rebound uh whatever his words are it sounds like his actions don't line up to that uh it sounds like you guys are just kind of whenever he's available and you're available you guys are hooking up um you say your relationship is so well put together but i would say a what relationship and b no it's not like it it just sounds like you guys are just kind of a couple fuck buddies which is okay but if it's keeping you from a real relationship, then I think you definitely need to kind of walk away from him. The statement, I don't think he serves a purpose anymore, is enough to go, well, it's not working and it's not benefiting your life at this point. You've tried, you've had fun, you like, you obviously care about the person and that's not to discredit everything that's happened, but there's, there's always a breaking point of I'm moving in a new direction. Let's just go our separate ways 
And that's, it's going to hurt, you know, it's going to hurt to right. just m move on. And I'm not saying that's going to be the easy thing, but just even vocalizing and questioning if it's good moving forward are the first steps to going, well, <laughs> it's not working out here. We need to divert and go a different path. And I think that, yes, you can love and care, love him and care about him all you want, but you can also do that from a distance when he's not uh, in, interrupting your life and invading your life every however often, whenever he decides he's ready to hook up. And, and you know, that's just, that's not fair to you. And it doesn't really respect your time either. So, but I think you kind of knew this answer. You just wanted someone to, you, you like wanted people to confirm it and tell you that you're doing the right thing yeah. by walking away. And I, I think that's definitely the right, the right choice. I definitely um, agree, though. You can care about someone and just see them succeeding on social media and going, damn, good for you. I'm, I'm happy it's working out for you, you know, and that be all you need, you know, and you know, deep down that you made the right decision for you. Thank you so much for the call. Leah. We appreciate it. Um, we are going to about to go to break. But before we do, why don't you go ahead and call our hotline while there's a commercials on so you don't actually have to listen to the ads. 407-519-0181 <laughs> and leave us a question about dating, sex, relationships, about traveling. I mean, honestly, it can be anything. Um, if you just want, if you need just some type of advice, you want some confirmation or something, if you have a random question about what is this or what is that, uh, you know, anything about sexual terms, anything like that, like we're here to answer that. And Why can... is Adam's beard the way that it is? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So why don't you go ahead and call 407-519-0181 during the break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about jealousy. So I have a, a friend that, that just, it drives me fucking crazy because she is consistently saying that jealousy is healthy because she will message me about her boyfriend and say things like, well, you know, uh, I, I saw that he told his, um, like one of his female coworkers, she texted him something and he said he'd take her up her shift. And she was like, thank you. Love you. And he said, love you too. And like, you know, what's up? What? That's not okay. That's a boundary that I don't, you know, and, and like, and she, and I was like, hmm. uh, I think you're just being a little jealous. There's like, people have weird you know like people have their dynamics and she's like no i was like that's not healthy jealousy is never healthy and she insists that it is and so i think that we should maybe talk about whether jealousy can be healthy in, in any capacity i think jealousy exists in every relationship healthy sure. and unhealthy relationships uh let's actually i mean if you don't mind I'll, I'll share what makes me jealous because i'm like i've been jealous with master of none and yeah. other exes in the past and i'm like yeah and i mean the exes didn't work out but you know i've definitely right, experienced right. <laughs> jealousy yeah i i know i know one of them for sure with exes and this this kind of bothers me a little bit with master of none is when my partner shares a lot of stories about their ex and it's like a random, it's a random story that pops up and they say, you know, so-and-so we used to do this and, you know, back in the day to tell a story about something in context to what we're doing now. And I know it's just a story, but I'm like, damn, did you have to tell me it was with your ex? Did you have to, why, why you got to keep bringing her up? I get it. You know, you were with this person for a really long time and that was a part of your life and identity, but wow, can, can you not? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And I, I had, a, I mean, I've had conversations with exes and master of none about like, I don't particularly love when you do that. You know, it just makes me feel like you, st I know you don't have feelings for this person anymore, but it makes me feel like you do, even though I know you don't, it's just this weird, like mind fuck of why are you talking about her? She's irrelevant. But then I, you know, I, I catch myself of seeing something and saying something about my ex too. And I'm like, well, that's not really fair because it's just a story. You know, I'm not saying I want to be back together with this person. Right. Right. D did we ever talk about this or was this something that we discussed and then you decided you never wanted to put on the podcast? Um, oh, Jesus. Well, now's the time. I know. I figured <laughs> it's a lot of time. Time has passed that it's not gonna, that about master nun having a, a photo of his ex you didn't find out till you went to his place. oh we've talked about we've we've I could, talked I could about remember we actually yeah. talked about it if you were like i don't want to talk about this right now until i talked to him personally i couldn't remember we ever talked about it so, i talked to him about it and yeah he just thought it was funny that i got jealous of it so yeah because he, he had like a photo of her still right or something on he, the... so she had painted an oil canvas of him and so that was it's a massive fucking thing in his old room that was framed there okay. and so when i walked in i saw that and he was like yeah my ex da 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 she painted it blah 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 and then attached to that there was a photo of her just like a just a polaroid basically just at the top of the frame oh. just kind of sticking there and i'm like 
why you know and he just thought it was just like yeah you know because it was his childhood room he's like yeah it's just kind of always been there you know i'm not it's not that big of a deal to me it's right. just stuff and we talked about it and he just was like don't worry about it you know nothing's going on but you know it's just like part of my past and it's just there um okay so the way you describe it now it sounds much less nefarious than it sounded when you first told me about it when you were feeling jealous about it well that was when that was the first time i went over there on thanksgiving in the middle of covid oh, that's and right. i that was the first time in his house meeting his parents and then i'm already feeling uncomfortable in the space because it's so fancy and nice and then i see this and i'm like oh my god <laughs> I really, I really feel like someday we need to see this oil painting of uh, Master of None because it's I, real. It's a nice. I mean, honestly, if it was a photo, you know, if it was a portrait of myself, I would keep it too. Right, I right. mean, I, I mean, I have gifts from exes. Like I have a ring that my ex bought me that I was still wearing when I met Master of None, and I still wear occasionally. And he's never given a shit that I've worn that. So. I kind of thought, yeah, I'm getting jealous over that. But then again, I do these things too, and it means nothing to me. So it has nothing to do with the relationship. It's just, I like this, or it's just there, or it's just a part of my life that doesn't necessarily mean I want to get back together with them. Right. So is that what you have to tell yourself when you like hear your partner telling stories about your about his ex and stuff? When Not or, anymore, whoever? because now now i kind of like the stories he tells about his ex okay. i think it, it's different early on when you're early on dating and you're like wait but i thought you picked me why are you talking about your ex where now i've been with master of none for two years and i'm like oh go tell another story about her you know and it's always like a funny right. a funny there's like i don't want to share it because it's like kind of embarrassing for her honestly but oh no uh, fuck that let's embarrass her let's hear it <laughs> now i can't remember she called her vagina something like that wasn't fuck what she called her vagina something very weird and oh she called her vagina her front bottom oh i've heard that before but that's I've hilarious never, that's fucking I've never, hilarious well i walk into the room and master of nuns just like he's like do you want to know what she used to call like she right. called her badge as a kid and i'm like not really but I, you're gonna tell me anyways and he's like her front bottom and i was like what you know so it's, it's shit like that's, that yeah, that yeah. Like, I, I don't get jealous over things like that. It's just stories that are funny and whatever. I, I have felt bad when I had uh, to have introduced, like, a new girlfriend to friends that knew, like, my, my ex-wife. And they'd be, like, they would say something like, oh, boy, Amy would hate her or something like that. You know, like... It, and and make it into this thing that somehow like not that it was her fault but that my like she was so much better than who my ex-wife was that it would just be this source of and i was so bad because i'm like they, like she doesn't want to hear like any comparison that like why do we have to bring up my ex-wife at all and so i yeah. can see that being an issue that doesn't like that would never bother me someone talking about their ex because i'm always like they're they're an ex like tell all the stories you want you know i guess it, if it became a like a wistful thing where they're telling stories about their ex and a oh i wish it's someday so yeah yeah blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah something like that i i think it'd be hard to date somebody who had like lost somebody like who was a widow or, or something mm. like that because yeah. then the ex is a like they kind of get put in like saint status where it's like you know they they, they can do no wrong and then you're you're essentially forever competing with a, a dead person so i can see that being difficult yeah i think with the jealousy that i just discussed it's more early on dating is where it really affected me and then when i feel more comfortable with the person i'm like oh yeah i'm good <laughs> i don't care right, right. <laughs> tell your story um when when i i would say one thing that makes me feel jealous is uh and and not only um just in a partner but in general is like if there's some type of uh inside joke or something like people like if, if, if I feel like I'm not part of the group like if I feel like everyone there has some type of like they have like a little legacy either an inside joke or or there's like something that I just don't know um if like I have a partner who has like a friendship which is great but like somehow they have like these little secret things that I don't know about and it's not because I don't trust the person it's a jealousy thing that pops up because I have this need to know everything about everyone like uh, that's just like I I I like I, it's, if I feel like I'm a collector, like I just want to, I want to collect everybody's thoughts. And like, that's how I process things. Is I think I, I want to know how everyone else thinks about things. And like, that's why, like, if you could ever pick your own superpower, I always pick telepathy. Like I would want to be able to read everyone's thoughts because I would want to know. Do you think it's an inclusion thing though? Like you want to feel included in the joke? 
probably not. It's probably some type of weird ego yeah. narcissism thing where I would just want to know what everyone's thinking at all the time. But I do like to be included on the joke. But so that is a little bit of it. But I, I so I don't want to feel like I'm an outsider. But at the same time, I just want to know what everyone's thinking. And so feeling with that with my partner that I'm left out of something with my partner is especially like has the potential to be hurtful. Um, yeah. although I've gotten better over the years of just talking my way out of it and where I don't feel bad anymore, but I used to feel, feel pretty bad about that type of thing. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I feel like mine was more from like a feeling excluded standpoint of, oh, you don't value me. So you didn't key me in on this conversation or whatever. Right. Right. Or because sometimes like things like inside jokes just happen organically. You can't really explain them. And you had so, to be there and you right. just weren't there. No offense to you at yeah. all. There was an episode of 30 Rock I was just watching where uh, the character, uh, he's gone, and Tracy Jordan, and he comes back, and um, the, his like, entourage has, a, uh, has an inside joke. And it, it's something like Smooth Move Ferguson or something like that. It's like the stupidest inside joke. And they joke try now. to recreate it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, do you remember that episode? <laughs> yes, I just watched it not too long ago. Oh, really? Yeah, so, so funny. So did I. It was actually like two days ago, and they actually recreated it. Like, all right, so it was raining out, and Jenna's hair was this much longer. So they wait for her to grow her hair out so it's longer, like to make sure everything's perfect. And they hire the same delivery guy to come in and do it. And he does it and that was it like just to recreate everything and of course it was a terrible inside joke it had no like even having to be there because it was just organic you know it was funny and and so that uh that i thought that was a good way of because like i that's kind of what i feel like well tell me all the details of the inside joke like i want to know and what it's happened never no funny. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly and it, i just feel like feeling like left out of anything even um even when it comes to like uh like people like it, it, like whatever they're I don't know. I think I just, I'm nosy is what it is. That might be the actual answer is that I just. A hundred percent. Yes. hundred percent nosy. I just want to know. You, I wanna, you like to know it all. And yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Know it all, sense. absorb it all. I'm like a data hoarder. I'm an information hoarder. Like I just want all of the information. So mm. uh, not having it would of course make me feel jealous. Yeah. I think another one is if we're spending more time with my partner's friends than mine and they become the preferred group of friends. And Wait, I'm you like. you have friends? Okay, well, maybe not currently, but <laughs> <laughs> not in Nashville. Oh, fuck, because Master of None is... <laughs> I just have been talking about him openly that I forgot his nickname. Right, right. Um, but, you know, Master of None has met all of my friends, but because they're pretty far away, you know, we don't right. hang out with them. And not that I hang out with his friends a lot either, but I've been in situations with ex-boyfriends where it's always his friends and yeah. we'll go out and it's like, well, this is what my friends are doing. And I'm like, yeah, but my friends are doing this. And he's like, yeah, but we should do this instead. And it kind of was the better plan anyways, but I'm like, mm. you're never getting any FaceTime with my friends. And that's really important if this is going to work long-term. And then of course it didn't. <laughs> right. Right. So, you know, I, I wonder are, at what point in your relationship, are we just going to start referring to him by his name? <laughs> That's a fantastic fucking question, and maybe I should ask him when you he's should fine ask him because I'm sure I'm he so doesn't give a shit. Nickname. I know. I'm sure he does not give a <laughs> shit in any way whatsoever. So at some point, we thought we should ask him. We can do a, yeah. a you know, actually announce. Rip the bandaid off after two years. Yeah, yeah. I feel like two Here's years. Here's his name. Be, yeah, <laughs> just call him by his name. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can see the spending time with with um, partners, friends uh, being being a little bit, you know, with, with his friends, with your with ex's friends, you know, more than your friends. That can be kind of frustrating because it, it also it, it's, it's for me, it's less about jealousy and also more like they maybe they don't like your friends. And that's the, that's yeah. a feeling, too. Um, yeah, I would say the uh, the other um, the other thing that probably that really would make me feel jealous uh, if I was if I had somebody and everything is is and this is so petty as hell too but like this is what makes me feel jealous is anybody helping like my partner feel like safe or pretty or desirable or uh helping them with anything whatsoever in any way whatsoever like like it, like basically to what degree though you know what i mean someone helping them with a flat tire anything any Okay, that's that's I, that's a bit much. Well, I'm just saying like that that's what would spark the jealousy with me because I have this I I made it very clear I have a Superman complex. I want to be the one that that comes in and saves the day no matter what. And you can't be. You're never going to be that well, person. Well, right, but but the thing is is I mean for many people I'm the person that they call when they first have a question about anything. 
whether that's fair yeah, <laughs> that's and, so yeah. True. and it's funny sometimes it's like you know it's it's legal questions because yes i went to law school or it's just random questions because i'm an adult who's lived a life and done things you know they're like just like you might know about this or it's just you know a lot of people do you know somebody who might like so it's like it's a like I, it's just, you've lived this, 50 different lives already. yes exactly yeah. it's this catch-all and so people come to me to and you know to solve their problems all the time and so having a partner and then having someone else like step in and, and help them with the problem would make me feel like somehow I was like, I wasn't the, the right person to solve their problem. And I have this, this complex. Ego. Uh, which, yes, ego. ego, where, ego. Where I would, I like to be the person to, I want to fix everything for everybody. Like, it's just how I want to, how I want to be. You so, just have to remind yourself to cool it with the ego and then well, just... and, and I'm generally, generally fine with it. Like if, you know, if it's just a friend and they're like, oh yeah, I got this take care of. I'm like, okay, cool you know and, and i but I'm someone not you love and blah, but if, like blah, it's blah. a partner or whatever then i'm going to be like i am going to feel some jealousy that someone else got to be there to rescue them or or help them or or when they were down in the dumps cheer them up if they were feeling insecure make them but feel what if secure it was their friend what if it was their friend Fuck their friend i don't care i'm still feeling okay, jealous about it that's a bit like you should you i know should it's want... a bit much i said it was petty as hell i know, I know <laughs> but you should want their friends and other family members or whatever same sex or opposite sex to build them up and oh no I'm, yeah them. like i'm glad on it objectively objectively i'm glad that they're there doing that i'm so glad that there's somebody that they but have internally other people. but but internally i'm jealous that it wasn't me doing that because i want to be the person who can always help like i, I just want to be that person that they know they can always count on 100 percent of the time to never let them down and it makes me feel like i let them down and so oh my gosh chill well, I, I, this is just the initial feeling of jealousy that I get about this. And then you don't do anything. I don't do like, anything about okay, it. I, I'm, yeah. I'm like, I can, I count to three and I'm okay. But like, this is, I'm just saying, this is <laughs> with like, we're being, we're just being honest about things that actually yeah. will make us jealous. That if I wasn't someone who, who's able to actually process it and be like, okay, that's unhealthy. Like be happy that they're fine. Be objective about it. Then yeah, I would go, I'd be in just a jealous rage monster all the time. Like it would be crazy. So, cause it's well, impossible. Good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're never going to be everybody's superhero and right. yeah, save the day in every scenario know, and know. know everything and get all the inside jokes. You just can't be, I'll, I'll you want to be a select, you want to be the popular kid who always is there, you know? Not even the popular one. I just want to be the one that they're like, oh no, he's the problem solver. I want to be the Sherlock Holmes is what it is. Like he's the one that's like, I think you are, but you can't be that every single well, know, time know, just because know, you're not available. You're that's not true. available. That's true. So, and, and actually, I just realized how, how. So, when I was in Dallas oh, doing doing the photo shoot with my, my friend, um, and she had a bad situation happen, and she was like, I'm going to be moving back to Tennessee, uh, which is where, where she's been living before she moved to Dallas. Um, she's like, I'm trying to figure out how to get there now. She cannot. Um, she, she did, she needs to get her license. Her license got suspended for not having insurance. So she has to get her license before she can rent the U-Haul. So she's trying to figure out what to do with her stuff and get to Chattanooga and everything. And I, I swear to God, for for like a solid 15 to 30 seconds, I considered changing my plans and telling her that I would make room in the car and that I would drive her to Tennessee before going all the way back to uh like to to you know to Utah. That was what I was, snapped you out of it. I took 10 to 30 seconds. It was just me just thinking, you know, it was like, I was sitting there and I was like, like, I really want to help her. Like she needs help. I have a car. Like I don't really have these ties. I don't have to be somewhere, but then I had to think about, it. I was like, no, that's like, that's make, makes the rest of my life inconvenient. Uh, my budget is not, I don't have my budget set up to drive there and back with yeah. gas and all that. So I had, I was like, okay, I objectively can't do it. I really want to do it, but I can't do it. I really want to do it, but I can't do it. So that was just a, it's an example maybe of trying to want wanting to be there for everybody and i thought man just saying this it sounds so bad like i i, I don't want it people, does sound bad <laughs> but, like, I know, I know. But, but i think but i think the important important part is like yes there's levels of jealousy because it exists in a healthy relationship or not you're obviously taking the healthy approach 
the alternative solution is going <laughs> fucking rage <laughs> and yelling and being jealous that well, another I, man I would, helped I wouldn't out. even be yelling. I wouldn't even be angry like that either. That's the but thing. But people get like yeah, that, though, yeah, because that's true. they couldn't be the fucking knight in shining armor in the right. scenario. So they get angry and they're like, how dare you let another man help you, blah, blah, blah. And then they become manipulative and then the relationships becomes toxic. And then we all know how that goes. So yeah. at least you're able to say, hey, like nobody's perfect. You know, everyone has different levels of jealousy, whether it's to your level, my level really stupid fucking things and just recognizing why am i feeling this way okay check it out the door that's okay yep. you're human you can be jealous over things but don't let it actually affect your next behavior you can think it and go mm, i'm feeling kind of jealous about that but don't get nasty because of it right no absolutely and 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 you know mine also has nothing to do with the gender of the person i don't care if it's a man or a woman helping my uh, my partner either it doesn't matter i just I, just I really, anybody <laughs> yeah i just i have like i said it's a superhero complex and and i'm realizing too I, I, it might have some i don't want someone to ever be dependent on me either that's the other thing it's not it's i don't want them to be like i need like i, I need so him. you get just, them stuck into you needing you all i don't the want time. that yeah because i don't want that because right. that's, that's unhealthy as well so i don't exactly. want that position i want it to be but i just i want them to just to have the security of knowing that if they're falling from a building i can swoop in and save them you know like it's like i said this with what cape with what's like what's i'm saying but that's that's the superman complex it's it's the lowest knows that if she jumps off a building no matter where she is in the world he'll catch her you know and that that's i want someone that i'm with to have that security and if i can't provide that daddy That's, you just want to be a, you just want to be a father figure that's not a, well maybe to a degree uh, okay. maybe to a degree maybe well it just it sounds like yeah, like my yeah. dad would just like want to always be yeah. there to help and be around type of thing and i don't yeah. know that's true well uh, let's go ahead and unpack that uh <laughs> some, of, some of that mess that and uh, we'll take a we'll take a take a quick break you can sing the jealousy song killers Jealousy, oh there's multiple jealousy songs i'm just here i was i was gonna sing the nick jonas song i still get jealous but you're gonna sing that <laughs> i don't know that one well i do think that you know mild jealousy can be healthy because it shows that you care about your partner and to it to a degree you know that there's you don't want them to go away and you value their opinion and you want to be involved and you're feeling a little jealous i think where jealousy is toxic is when like we said you explode you react harshly and you don't just talk it out so healthy forms of jealousy like i've had with master of none it's like hey i'm feeling jealous about this scenario let's talk about why and i think i've always had that conversation with partners when i felt jealous and just told them outright like I know this might seem stupid to you, but this is kind of a big deal to me that I'm feeling this way. Can we just kind of talk through why I'm feeling like this? And maybe is it a possibility we could prevent this in the future? Or like, you know, just so I can work it out and just get their feelings on it. Because, you know, even with the the painting scenario and that thing, when I explained I was jealous, he was like, oh, you have nothing to be jealous about, you know? Like, you know, and it was just like, it kind of just eased my worries of like, oh yeah, that's just how it is. You know, we're, we're comfortable. It, it, it's like being stuck in a box. And if you don't talk about it, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it explodes. I think if you just talk about your jealousy, once you start having certain feelings, it helps relieve a lot of the built up pressure you're going to have later on. I, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree that, that minor jealousy is healthy. And I, I think that yeah, I think it's well, I think it happened. I think it happened. I'm not saying like it happens in all healthy relationships. Well, okay, so that's what I'm gonna say is I think jealousy is natural. Like having the jealousy, you know, a reaction is a natural reaction. I don't think it's necessarily healthy. It, you know, so it's it's a processing the natural reaction in a way that makes it healthy, right? Like you do it through communicating, through talking, rather than like bottling it up, um, rather than having some type of you know passive aggressive behavior or or whatever, overreacting things like that. So I think like the actual feeling of jealousy is a, it is a natural feeling, but I don't think I don't think it's healthy to have the, like to 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 have those feelings. I think in an ideal world, if we were all emotionally uh, secure enough and emotionally healthy enough, we wouldn't have jealousy. You would, right. I mean, yeah, in a, per, in a perfect, 
in a perfect world, but as growing humans that are learning to cope with new situations, I think it's only natural that you're going to feel jealous. And what makes it healthy, like you said, is how you cope with that. If you talk about it, if you acknowledge it, if you, instead of just acting on jealousy and not realizing that you're jealous, yeah, that's fucking toxic. And I think all of us have toxic behaviors. And this is one of them where people get jealous and then can lash out. And you can be jealous and that be kind of toxic, but then talk about it. And then you're not talking, you know, you're right, actually right, right. solving your own problems. And then for future scenarios, you're getting better at handling issues of jealousy. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. Um, I, I think that, you know, maybe um, that we, we did, we did some research and this is just some of the things. So they, they were trying to talk about things that they considered to be like healthy jealousy that I, I really kind of disagree with. Um, I think it's the same thing we were kind of talking about that. It's not necessarily, healthy jealousy it's healthy ways of of managing yeah healthy responses to jealousy and and so i I think that that's that's really the the important way to to approach it is your responses to jealousy or or, or what matters um to feeling the jealousy yeah because if you if you're out with your girlfriends and you're like yeah i'm just so jealous that he does this 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 and this and you're just bitching about it and complaining and acting on it but you're not taking any methods to solve that jealousy have the conversation with your partner explore why you're feeling like that then you're not doing yourself any good and it's just going to bring you down a negative path that's ultimately going to cause fights and potential breakups and that route (laughs) yeah i and i think that you know one of the most important ways that we you can really process to make sure that you're handling jealousy in healthy ways is to figure out where it's coming from and like why you're having it is it because of an ex is it baggage that's you know resulting from something that you know happened to you as a child you know that there could be any number of things um feeling no not feeling good enough to be dating you know to be dating this person and mm-hmm. you see them hang out with other people and then you get jealous because internally there's something that's needs i'm not going to say broken but it needs to be fixed right. and worked on and it's like it's like just key indicators but you keep going down the crack to the main root of it and it's like oh this is the actual insecurity that jealousy stems from right is it the perhaps that you uh, were the first child uh the first grandchild you were the first person to go to college the first person to get a graduate degree the smartest person in the family and always told that you were uh you were absolutely special and you're going to be something super and so you uh decided that you had to always um be that person and now you oh, was to- that you <laughs> <It's not you. laughs> and then now and then now you actually uh feel like you have to make sure that uh, everybody uh is aware of it maybe that that could be the root of your jealous you know, you know where you get jealous about not being able to help people but dissecting that and going yeah. hmm what kind of trauma is this resulting from is going to get you to hopefully solve some of that and it be less of a blow when you encounter a scenario absolutely although i like in my example there's no trauma there <laughs> Right? It's just your, it's no just your it environment. Just, it was it was just yeah. growing up being told that you were you were basically the best thing he ever created and believing it like that legitimately there's absolutely zero trauma involved in that i i have no childhood trauma whatsoever so it can god come... god are you there <laughs> <laughs> so like like it, it, it can it, like it can come from any number of things and so trying to figure out the the origin of of that where that jealousy comes from is is essential and it and it, it helps me when I do feel jealous, when I do feel anger, when I feel any type of toxic um, feelings of, about things, to process it, to step back. Like I said, it takes me 10 seconds or 30 seconds of just thinking about it before I feel better. And, and by processing it that way, I'm able to not get angry and not, or not get jealous and not any, any negative things um, by knowing where it comes from. Yeah. It's like, if I feel insecure about my outfit and then I see a, you know, a hot girl at a bar and she's fucking killing it. I feel like a twinge of like, Hmm, why do I look like shit? You know, whatever. But what am I going to do about it? Well, I'm going to fucking throw a drink at her face. It's just like, why are you jealous? Like, so wait, you wouldn't look at that and be like, Oh, wow. Like we have great, no, ta- I, we I, have great taste together. Like that wouldn't be your thought. Your thought would be instead like, why is she rocking it? And I don't feel like good in it. Uh. Is this Depends. after I made fun of you for wearing it? Is that, that what this is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like if I've already been kicked a couple of times and I'm like, well, I'm trash. No, but I, I just, I think it's easy. Like a lot of that stems from when I'm already feeling insecure about myself. Then I start looking outward at other people and what they have and going, hmm, I'm jealous of that. Instead of looking inside and going, look at all the great shit I have going for me. Why do you give a fuck what they're doing? Yeah. 
I agree. Worrying about other people is, is really, that, that can really lead to some toxic paths. Um, it doesn't do you any good. And then just, it just shrinks your self-worth for no fucking reason. And you're just doing it to yourself with all of this negative self-talk. And at the end of the day, jealousy isn't getting you anywhere. It's like, it's not a, it's not a good, fe- it's not, it's not one of those emotions that you're like, yeah, I feel jealous. You're like, fuck. <laughs> Right. I shouldn't, I shouldn't feel this way. Let's try to solve it. That should, that should honestly be your thought process instead of let me act on that jealousy. You know, like, let me yell at this guy. Let me throw a drink on some girl. Like what the fuck is any of that doing for you? And, and it also comes down to what your partner, like what you, how your partner can help you feel better. Now, if you, one of the, something that's less healthy than jealousy is if you can't communicate those to your partner safely like if you, if you feel like anytime you're you're worried about something you try to bring it up with them and they get defensive they get angry they just if they they can't process why you're feeling jealous because they feel well even if they're not even guilty of anything but they feel like somehow you don't trust them and, and etc that can be very damaging to a relationship so having a healthy relationship it means being able to communicate those feelings like you could when you talk to him about the, the you know, just you mentioned why it made you feel that way about the, the painting and the photo. And yeah. he was able to hear you and listen, you know, and, and be like, oh, oh, I, you know, yeah, there's nothing, to, you know, nothing to worry about. Yeah, you can express your feelings and feel like you're in a safe space to be able to express how you're feeling and go, hey, this might feel stupid. But and if you feel like you're comfortable in that, you're like, OK, I'm in a safe environment that my partner's willing to listen and we can work on a resolution. And I feel good about that. So what do you think about if you were having jealous feelings and you were trying to work through where they're coming from and you feel afraid to communicate that to your partner? What, what's the step after that? <laughs> well, <laughs> probably not in a healthy relationship where we can openly discuss things, number one. Yeah. And I'm sure that's not the only scenario. And that would probably make me question a lot more than just that one thing of jealousy if I if I can't if I can't go to my partner with almost I I mean I go to master of none with literally everything stupid and not stupid mostly stupid um and I feel very (laughs) comfortable doing it so it's like if I don't feel comfortable telling my partner about the dumb things and like how I'm feeling then I'm not in the right relationship at the end of the day and yeah Yeah. that's not going to happen early on you're not going to feel 100% comfortable you know the, the first six months of dating someone even the first year but you have to slowly build on like, okay, well, why am I feeling this way? How can we get to a point that I feel comfortable talking about it and easing into it? And if you can't ease into it and you're realizing you're getting negativity or shut down or belittled because you're expressing your feelings, you're not in the right relationship. Yeah, I, I agree. And and my friend who I said started off when I started off the, this half the episode talking about her, like that's how it is with her. Like she has these jealous feelings. Um, but she can't bring up to him because he overreacts. He, he does not handle communication well. That's one major issue there. And so it, it just causes her jealousy to then flare up even worse. And it's like a self-perpetuating cycle. And she's trying to say, well, it's healthy to be jealous. I'm like, yeah, none of what you have is healthy right now. Like it's just lack of communication and then a more jealousy and then lack of communication. Like it's just, it's all toxic. The better statement is jealousy is normal. How you handle it should be healthy. Yes. Yeah. So I misspoke in the beginning too. You know, I was saying that jealousy is healthy, but like, I just saw it as like, it's normal, you know, like jealousy is just normal, but how you respond is whether that you make that healthy decision or not. Absolutely. And, and having open, uh, this kind of is a tenet of most of our episodes, having (laughs) our entire podcast. Yeah. Open, honest (laughs) communication is the key to so much of it. And if you don't have that, then you don't have one of the major building blocks of having a healthy relationship. So it doesn't matter how jealous you are, your relationship's probably already flawed or in trouble. Yeah. If you can't talk about it, you're probably not in the right relationship. There's your sign. Yes. (sighs) Are those our takeaways? Is that it? I mean, I I think so. I think that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a concept that I just, you know, it's important to talk about jealousy. And I I think it's very important to understand where it comes from and how to walk through it and how to be able to communicate with your partner. And for partners, if you if you don't have jealousy, but your partner does, you have to learn to be able to listen without getting defensive. I think that's the other takeaway is that if you're not a jealous person, but you have a partner who is, you need to be able to talk with them and, and be able to have them feel comfortable talking to you. I think that's very important. 
but to a degree you don't have to coddle them no like, no do not enable their jealousy right, right right like there's a there's a level of like a healthy line there too of like you can listen and be there for them and talk through it and work right. through it as a couple but if you're enabling it and allowing it and letting them spew toxicity in your relationship and then blaming it as jealousy and you're listening and still being there that's an issue there's a line right like if you told master none that you didn't really like that photo he was like oh, okay and he took the whole thing out in the backyard and burned it that would be enabling your jealousy Shit, i'd be like what the fuck's wrong with this <laughs> yeah, right right i mean the, <laughs> that's what i'm saying that'd be enabling it uh well, yeah that's so, the whole point is like what was he gonna do with it you know yeah. like i just brought it up and i was like i realize you know nothing's really gonna change from this but i just kind of want to mention it because that's just how i'm feeling the end yeah, yeah. D- don't go burning shit <laughs> because well, they're like i don't like it because <laughs> like because jealousy even though i said it's natural there's an irrational basis to it and so if you enable the irrationality of it that it just it further justifies additional jealousy and it doesn't doesn't solve the problem so instead you need to be able to be like oh i understand no no whatever you want hey the, you know i want you to feel comfortable but i'm going to still do these things because this is important to me but i want you to just feel comfortable that there's you can trust me and if you know if, if you i'm going to tell you this is happening and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah and open up you know open lines of communication <sighs> Well, speaking of open lines of communication, if you want to give us a five-star rating review on iTunes and tell us... <laughs> hold on, hold on. No, no, you went from open lines of communication, which is a perfect segue into reminding them to call the helpline. Oh, you're right. Well, into I'm just leaving reviews. us a review, I'm, but like reviews, open lines yeah. of communication. Like, <laughs> you're right. Call our hotline. Okay, fine. I fucked that one up. <laughs> call our, our DKS hotline at 407-519-0181. But what I'm really, because I was looking at reviews earlier, that's where my mind okay, was. Just okay. like communicate with us through a five star rating and review on iTunes. That would be greatly appreciated. But yeah, that's call true. the hotline too. Yeah, sure. And speaking <laughs> of appreciated, uh, no, I'm just trying to say some <laughs> shitty, shitty segue. <laughs> Watch us on YouTube, which is uh, <laughs> which is appreciated in value. Uh, YouTube.com slash dating kind of sucks. You can also follow our Instagram at dating kind of sucks. Uh, email us with any questions as well, although we prefer you use the hotline. Uh, dating kind of sucks podcast at gmail.com. And for as little as $5 a month, you can join us on Patreon at Patreon patreon.com slash DKS podcast. We do behind the scenes episodes and other fun things. Yes. On there. And uh, follow our TikToks. Uh, Sarah's is simply Sarah G underscore, and I'm Adam Avitable on TikTok, and we do different types of content there. Sarah's got a lot of fun travel stuff you can follow along with, and I Yay. have, um, you know, more of my crazy uh, antics uh, talking about shitty men. So uh, that, can, that can always be fun. He does a whole podcast on it, and he does this whole TikTok on it, too. Yeah, it's crazy. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, but with that, we will uh, be back next week with some type of episode of some sort and from some different location. And so confident there. Yeah. I know <laughs> something will be happening on, on our airwaves uh, and it'll be on time. <laughs> unlike my episode last week. Hey, you still got it out. <laughs> so thank you for listening. Uh, we'll see you next week. Until next time. Whether you're, Married or single or poly or ace Or hanging out with swingers back at your place Listen to us as we get no fuck On Tinder and Bumble and plenty of yucks Trying and trying and having no luck Because we all know Dating kinda sucks Sarah and Adam are two of a kind He says stupid shit and she doesn't mind They're not doing this show to make any bucks Life is a chicken whose feathers they pluck Why does it work? Well here is the crux They both know Dating kind of sucks. Dating kind of sucks.